Hello. Today I would like to show two examples on how to draw isometric uh, view of a part when its 2D orthographic views are provided. So this is the, the first example, which is the simpler one. You can see on the left top corner, I have three orthographic views. These are standard views of this part. So here, this is the front view and then top view and then right view. Um, and they are in the correct um, position and alignment. And down here, this is basically the same, but with grids that can help me determine the dimensions more easily. And our goal is to draw a three-dimensional looking isometric view of this part. So it looks more realistic, looks more pictorial. So before we do that, we need to be able to visualize the part in our head. So we need to be able to imagine what this 3D part looks like. So we need to be able to read the uh, orthographic views correctly. Um, so based on the views, I can tell that this part is overall a block um, with rectangular front and top and more of a square side. Um, and also another important thing to notice is that I have this continuous space on the front and also continuous space on the top. Uh, they are not separated by any visible lines. So that's important. That's going to guide me uh, to draw these continuous space or areas on my um, three-dimensional drawing. Another thing is that from the right view, you can see there's an inclined surface. Um, and also there's a hole. The circle right here represents the hole. And the hole is a through hole, which is indicated by these two pair of hidden lines. So the hidden lines uh, uh, basically give us the outlines of the hole, and you can tell that it's it's a through through all hole. And one more thing, over here we have these two areas that are defined by visible lines, but from the right view we can see we have hidden lines here. So judging from that, we can tell that. Uh, this area is a, a cut, okay? So at this point, I'm pretty confident that I know what this part looks like and I'm ready to draw it on my isometric paper. So on the right-hand side, you see the isometric paper. You see how the grids, they are oriented in this, in this fashion. They are basically um, 60 degree apart. And when you use isometric paper to do your drawings, you want to pay attention to the orientation. You want to always have a vertical line here. Okay. So if you don't have the vertical lines here, um, if you change the orientation of the paper, then your drawing is going to look distorted. So on the isometric paper, what I want to do first is to outline the overall um, outer shape of this part. Um, basically, I'm going to use the largest the dimensions to draw a block. And I can read the dimensions over here on this corner using the grids. So I can read that along this direction. Uh, that's overall 10 grids long and uh, six grids high and another six grids wide. So I'm going to transform those grids onto my isometric paper and uh, I'm gonna draw this block right here okay so I usually do draw on paper but I like to use PowerPoint to make videos so along this line right here this is the longest dimension that is the 10 grids so if you count it that will be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten along this direction okay and then along this direction, that's the six grids height. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then along this direction, that will be the six grids width. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 
now I have this block here. Um, suddenly, as you can tell, um, my 2D paper becomes more three-dimensional looking. So I'm using the outer dimensions to define this space. Um, so I know that these are boundaries of my uh, three-dimensional drawing. So whatever I draw, I want to make sure I do not draw outside of this, this block. Okay. So on this block, it's important to identify your um, planes. So this is, again, my front plane. This is the top plane, and this is the right plane. And the orientation, once again, is important. It has to be consistent with your orthographic views. Okay. So what I do next is that I want to, I like to draw whatever is actually on the outer wall or outer plane. I want to draw those first. So on my front view, I can see these. So I mentioned this already, this continuous space that is completely on the front wall. So you see other visible lines here. You see this visible line here. You see this visible line, this visible line, this visible line. These lines are not on the front wall. They are actually a little bit back. What I'm trying to do right now is to draw these lines, these several lines first onto my front wall and make, making sure that you use the grids or use the dimension information uh, to get the correct length and position of these lines. So doing that. So this right here corresponds to uh, this right here. Okay. The next thing I want to do, same thing. I know that this continual space is completely on the top wall for the same reason. So I'm going to draw out these lines, these visible lines, completely on the top wall right here. Okay. Again, making sure that the dimensions are correct, the positions are correct. And then for the right view, I can see these lines are completely on the right wall. So I'm going to draw them onto the right wall. So for that, I'm going to draw the straight lines first, and then there's a circle. The circle is a little bit tricky. Um, on isometric views, circles do not appear like circles. They appear like ovals. Okay. So what we do is we first identify the center, the center of the circle, and then we kind of draw a little window to to draw the square that corresponds to the diameter of the circle. So we draw, because drawing straight lines on asymmetric view is easier. So that's what I did here. You see this little window, the center has to correspond to the correct uh, position of the center of the circle. And then you can see that the, this window right here, um, I'm going to draw my circle inside this window. I'm going to draw the oval uh, in quarters, so one quarter at a time. So making sure that this point and this point, they uh, superimpose with my square. And draw this line, and then draw this line, and then draw this line. So using a mouse to draw that, it's very ugly. So let me erase that. But that's the idea, how you want to draw the circle. So instead, I'm going to use yep, this oval right here to represent that. So as you can tell, um, this uh, circle has the correct center and also it has the correct diameter, okay, because these four points, the edges, uh, superimpose with the, with the outlines of the square. So at this point, I have translated all the lines that are actually on the outer walls to my block. I actually do not need these construction lines anymore. Now we need to fill in the lines that are not on the walls, that are a little bit in inward, based on your understanding of this part. For example, because of this, this line right here, I know that it's going to have an uh, inclined uh, surface. Therefore, there must be a line right here. Um, so you can kind of just fill in that line to define this inclined surface, which intersect with this um, straight vertical surface. And also over here, 
based on my understanding of the drawing, I know there's going to be a sharp a straight edge here and another straight edge here. And uh, basically that's the cut that I mentioned earlier. And when this vertical wall and this horizontal wall intersect, there must be an edge here with where they intersect. So after I fill that in, inspect this a little bit more. Um, I do not need to draw any hidden lines on my isometric drawing. Okay, so that's the first example.